Antlion. Hey. Hello. You can get, you could probably hear me a second ago on my um, default laptop webcam microphone, which would have been terrible. Ooh. And I, I really, really hate bad audio. So even though it's going to be really uncomfortable for me to wear these, I'm going to have to build something. But this, um, this is great. This is my little Antlion uh, mod mic. And it's, it's as good as a snowball. Right, just a quick check of the Twitter. Oh, thanks Al is retweeting me and everybody's being really nice. Thanks, thanks Nelly. Excellent. Right, so who have we got? Says hi, hey mate, how are you doing? Hello Zach, how are you? How's your dad? How's your sister? How's your mum? How's your cat? <laughs> oh, excellent. Right, so let's get on with it because I don't think I'll be doing this for a huge amount of time. Oh, that's very uncomfortable. It was probably as long as this lasts. It's not just Coke. Swap glasses. Um, I need to make sure that you can see I've got my OBS screen up on the laptop so I can see that you what you can see right um, not sure how well you can see this because actually oh no that's a bad idea let's not do that <laughs> um, right so th this is the back of the pinball machine and uh, you might be able to work that out base speakers here this is all this is all new You'll see this in the next episode, so sneak peeks for you. Um, this is the power um, power inlet with a fuse switch uh, and a button for the PC there. But I've got what I want to do tonight is I need to. These are the amps for um, these are the amps for the exciters for the surround sound feedback part of it. Um, so there's a separate. Um, built-in amp in the Logitech speaker in here that's got its own separate volume controls and that one basically does that does the sound that comes out of the speakers in the back box and the bass speaker and then the um, inside we've got the four exciters that do the feedback um, and those are driven by these swish amps but I need to mount these inside the case somehow and the the theme of um, this whole build is that everything is easily removable so I c everything's modular and I can I can take everything in and out sorry I'll just strip um, it's getting quite warm I can take everything in and out so I can maintain the whole thing easily and I can I need to build it up and, and strip it down quite a lot because I need to get it all built up and then paint it so to paint it I need to strip it down and then I'll need to put it all back in there and then I'll need to upgrade things and um, at points I'll just have to take it all apart so I want a way to put these inside probably stacked I think stacked like that so that I can still get to the back to um, because these are these little um, where's the these little push connectors they're fine but they're quite difficult if you want to if you want to get stranded wiring I suppose I should solder the end of the wires that would make it easier but yeah you need a little bit of room you don't need a huge amount of room but yeah so I want I want to stack these so what I'm going to do is I've got some plywood and it's just the right width so I want to cut a chunk of this off and actually yeah I could make just like a little house for it at the bottom one and another one on top okay so we're gonna so we're gonna cut this so that it is do we need any width no so we can 
put that one. This is the same plywood, so I'm using this for width. So we put that one there. That one there. Grab the pen at my handy little pen pot. Make a little mark. This is my new combination square. I love this. So I've got I've got I've got multiple combination squares. I can start showing off my tools. This is great. I love this. Um, uh, this is this was my first one, and it's it's all right, but it's cheap and it's not actually square. Uh, so I just use that when I'm doing rough cuts. Um, this one is much more accurate, but it's actually quite difficult to slide that in and out. And it's this is big and quite heavy. And when you're doing things like this, it's, it's a it's just a big bulky thing. Um, so that you can just about see. But this is my little tool rack here. Um, but this one I picked up recently. Is this is nice? It's got a lovely action to it, and it locks really quickly. So anyway, let's um, let's get this marked. I'm obsessed, actually. I don't know whether the ends of this. Well, I'm I'm fairly sure whether the ends of this is square, but this is one of my main obsessions: is um, making sure everything is perfectly square. Where's my? One second, I'm looking for something. It's here somewhere. I had it just the other day. This is a nice thing about having a mod mic, is I can wander around. Where, oh, there it's there. This is a shooting board. I take it most of you that are watching are not actually woodworkers. Oh, I've got my to-do list as well. You can look back at that later and freeze frame it and see it, or the massive amount of work that I've got to do. So yeah, shooting board. So if I want something square, I put it on this. I want a piece of um, square wood. It's gonna, ooh. All right. I just wanna check the chat. Oh, mouse is frozen. Come back, mouse. Where did I get the mini combination square? I picked that up. I think it was home base of all places. It could be, yeah, it was home base. Um, go, I'm glad your dad's fine, Zach. I spoke to him not not long ago. Um, yeah, there's a lot. To, <laughs> there's a lot more going to happen soon. Um, laptops retrospective. You are my hero. You seriously, after last night, you're my hero. He uh, he got L had um, uh, escaping IRL at escaping IRL on Twitter. Um, who was, used to be on Ready Play Tour with us, uh, with Lewis and I and Richard and Ross, uh, did a live stream last night for a charity, and um, uh, she was at like 90-something percent or 89 percent, and Laptop Retrospective came along and slam-dunked the last few percent uh, and donated the rest of the money and forced Elle to uh, get into um, into VR in with a... a her worst fear, <laughs> which is fish, bizarrely. And it was hilarious. Made my night. It was brilliant. You were my hero. Um, did, 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 uh, not actually woodworkers. Yeah, there might be some. Most. I did say most. I qualified it. <laughs> I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm trying to expand your horizon, horizons. Excellent. Right. Um, I've forgotten what I was saying. Yeah. So I'm, I'm obsessed with um, keeping things square. Um, uh, I, next time I do this, if I ever do this again, this could go horribly wrong. I could cut something off. I'll have it so I can see the chat at the same time. I could do it on my phone, I suppose. Um, actually, look, this is this, this is my phone here. This is where my phone is. And my phone was here when I was watching uh, a video of another YouTuber. I left it on my um, workbench here. And I reached up, up here. You, you can't quite see it. You can see it in the small screen, I suppose. Up here is a row of pliers and grips and cutters and all sorts. Um, I reached up while I was watching this video because I was working on something and knocked off these. And I landed on my phone. And my lovely Galaxy S20 now has um, a little bit of a... Oh, an added feature and it shattered the screen it still works fine it is insured I will get it I will get it sorted 
So this is my Stanley number four and a half. It's a big, hefty plane, this one. Uh, you want heft when you're doing something like this. Anyway, so when you before you do anything like this, where are we going? It's this end. Before you do anything like this, you want to make sure that the, the ends are square. So I know that this is square to this. So when I run this along here and take nice shavings off the end from one end to the other, then this is definitely square with this. And we can test that. Look, look how that's... That is touching all the way along there. That just warms my cockles. So anyway, let's cut that off. Um, put you back up there. Uh, that was the square. So I know that this is square to this. I don't know. This is an unknown. This doesn't matter. This is <laughs> completely unimportant. I do not need to make sure this is square. This could be round. <laughs> it wouldn't matter even a bit <laughs> but this is my obsession and you are watching um so actually probably better just to move that for a sec okay i can see the line on this actually oh no let's, let's do it properly shall we Light, light, uh, light cut first and then a heavy cut just to break the fibers because I'm kind of across the across the board I should really go the other side if if it's, if I was making a cabinet <laughs> I'm not I'm not making a cabinet um, I would go across the other side as well and then cut along to or to the side of the line and it would the uh, the knife cut would stop it fraying so and you get to see actually I'll do it like this first you get to see one of my favourite tools here. This is my um, Ryoba. Sorry, itchy nose. Ryoba uh, Japanese Ryoba saw, um, and it's fantastic. It's unusual in saws. In um, a normal, like a hacksaw or uh, a normal european handsaw cuts on the push and this cuts on the pull it's really very pleasant to use i'll watch my work top once you're through that far and i followed the line fairly close in fact very closely the the saw is held by the cut I can show you this. Um, the little. Oh, uh, this is the line that I cut, and you can see that just there is where I penciled that first mark. But the actual cut line, it's got no fraying. There's none on the back because it doesn't tend to fray on the back. But this is the side that didn't have a cut line, and it's look, it's all over the place. So that's that's one of the reasons I do that. Um, so that's that's got to be square uh, but yeah we need to square up so we need two of those oh wrong way around keep asking questions or having chatting and having a good time because I will I'll get back in there in a second and I'll answer them and and I'll take part but right so now I know that this is my square edge my square corner this one here and I know that this is square all around so I can use this as my um, as my square as it were let's get that one cut And then we're going to need some uprights. I always put my saw back up after I use it. Always. It's a really good habit. Because they are the teeth. Oh, that is not square. 
Something's gone wrong there. Okay, let's take a... That's square. That's square. That's mostly square. That's square. So if I... Oh, I was just a bit out with how I held it on there. So I do it across that side of the line. The microphone's right in front of my eye. There we go. You don't cut on the line, you cut to the side of it, in the waist side. First um, time I got this saw and tried it out, I was terrible with it. It's, by the time I got to the end of a cut like this, I'd be about half a centimetre out. <laughs> The thing to do with it is to be bold, actually just um, go for it and it tends to it tends to sort itself out. Right so now I've got those cut, I need to cut some more in a sec but I want to get those square so that I know what size they're going to be. I need a quick release, oh, I did it wrong here. Quick release vice on my Christmas list please. Make this a lot easier. All right, so I'm just go around and actually I do need to square that up. This is the off cut. Yeah, that's out. That's a little bit out. So we want to flip that that way. That's So I know these top two edges and two sides are square now on both boards. So now I can put them both that way around. Ooh. Get them final square. So this is touching at this end, but it's not at this end. I'm pushing this way as well as that way. Now it's got, once you get a full length shaving, you know you're square. All right, they are identical now. And not only are they square around this way, they're also square that way on all those edges because the, the plane is square. So as long as you've got the blade adjusted properly. Right, so now, let's make sure you can see this. Yeah, let's do it over here a bit. Um, we've got this going on here, and then we're gonna need sides, and another one of these to go on there. And I want a little bit of gap there because <laughs> they probably don't get hot, but these look heat sinkish. <laughs> So I don't want to enclose them too much. Um, so we're going to want something that is ooh, um, let's do it with this. Let's do it with my lovely set square. So that's that's the minimum for 42 mil plus say uh, that's nine mil so let's make it 50 mil uh, 50 mil uh, did I square that end oh, I hate that they put these labels on everything uh, I just have to hide that somewhere oh I should really clamp this, but I can't be bothered. I'm in a rush. 
getting thirsty as well. I'm going to check the chat in a sec. Um, right, another way you can cut this is just to stick it in there and cut it like that and then square off the edge because it won't be quite so square. Right, chat, how are you guys doing? Oh my god! Uh, you need to build a bench! Um, so many videos. I built this bench. This is um, uh, this is a, uh, actually a big old chunk of um, um, it's like flooring. It's like one and a quarter inch flooring that I've salvaged from somewhere. And I've made this bench and a bench in the shed. Um, and this has got a sheet of ply stuck to the top. But I am going to rebuild this bench because. Um, it's actually bowed in the top and that is a really bad thing. It's not much, but if I'm um, if I'm trying to make something flat, it's uh, it's really awkward uh, working on a slightly bowed bench. But yeah, just I learned how to do it on YouTube, like everything we do. Um, damn souls. Oh, thank you, Nelly. That's a really kind of thing to say. I just, I just love sharing. I do. I'm I'm weird like that. I'm, I don't know. Um, I've always been like that. Um, you know, <laughs> Japanese saw this. So yeah, yes, they are more respectful of the space. Um, right. So I've got a Stanley heavy duty. There's my hat. This, this features in a lot of videos. But it keeps me safe from acorns. Um, I'll tidy that later. This is um oh I'll go back to you can uh just a normal handsaw with massive great teeth on it and that'll cut mm, almost certainly quicker than the other one but um look at the size of it. I can do just as much with the with this as I can with this and this has got two blades on it. This has got um uh, fine tooth on one side this is for cross cutting and this is for rip cutting um, and there are differences you can you can buy cross cut and rip cut saws this is just a heavy duty I think this is a, a cross cut saw that a cheap one that I've had for years and it's probably quite blunt now but still you know it does fine if I'm just cutting up rough timber um, but this I... excuse me Small medical emergency, not emergency, I'm over selling it, but I will be back in two minutes. It's really windy outside, so you're going to see the the storm in a sec.
so sorry about that. I um I didn't warn my dad. This was so on the spur of the moment. I didn't warn my wife that I was live streaming, and um, she wouldn't have called me in for that. But I didn't want to say no. Um, it was nothing. It was nothing to worry about. Uh, anyway, are some brands better than others? I've I just bought the not the cheapest one off of Amazon, but not far off of it. It was um. What is it? Or Ryoba Augusta is uh, is what's printed on it, and I assume that's a cheap one. I didn't pay very much money for it, um, and I couldn't be happier with it. It's, and I've recommended it to lots of people, and they've all found it great. Uh, Carpentry and YouTube chat are not compatible. Yeah, <laughs> I will take a finger off arcades. <laughs> Hi, by the way. Nice to see you. Uh, I just don't definitely saw not to expect. No, they're not. They're not expensive, and they're so useful. And I tell you what, the other good thing is compared to that Stanley handsaw, is um, what they call a kerf or the thickness of the blade. Um, oh, have I still got? Where's the camera? Come back. No, oh, no, we're in the right place. It looked um, like it was skew. Um, the thickness of the of the the teeth of the blade, not necessarily the blade, because the teeth are actually set off e um, to either side, is very, very thin. So this you can use this for for all sorts of things. Um, so this is a flush cut saw, and it's a similar type of thing, but this is for cutting um, against something. And you can you can use this in the same way to a certain extent. The the teeth are set on both sides, whereas on this one they're only set on this side. So they're only up on this side and they're flat on this side. But um, this this will still function as a as a rough kind of uh, flush cut saw. Anyway. God, I'm getting right off topic. It's great. Um, who's who's calm? You don't it's the this is I'm like a swan. You want to see what's going on under the water. Um Bad wind and rain. Um, Barbara, who is uh, you should now know as Nelly. Nelly's um, someone that has been around. Oh, the Ready Player Two people, which is just just like one of our super fans for a long for years and years and years. We've known Nelly. She's great. Um, <laughs> showed a picture on uh, Twitter of her back garden, full of bears. Just you know. <laughs> As you do, you go out in my back garden, the worst you're going to get is a, like a rabid squirrel. And they're not even rabid. Um, <laughs> black bears eating apples in her garden. <laughs> right. Should we get on with it? Let's do some more. So, we're making a little house for our amps. Like, let's do it this way so you can see. Something like this okay and I've just thought I've just had a thought I need to be able to screw this one <clears throat> into the base I might need to make this one bigger this this was a mistake uh, so when it's when it's like this and these are attached and that's up there like that I could reach in, actually that wouldn't be too bad, that wouldn't be the end of the world. I could put some... I don't like... <laughs> I haven't got OCD. This isn't OCD, this is just... It's kind of OCD. So I need, I want the bottom one big enough to have a, an overhang on either side which is large enough to have four screw holes in. Yep, that's what we want. So we're going to use this bit and we're going to turn it over like that. So it's, let's, um, let's square it first. The saw's out. I, I didn't leave that out. I got that out to show you things. That's it. Right, so that's our square corner. That, how, how much should we have on either side? How much should we have? Let's have um, 
twice what's there. So it's two centimeters, so let's have four centimeters more on there, which is that. And that will be there. Can you still see? I wish this could be close. Why can't it be closer? I could make it closer. Oh, you're going on a journey. Oh, oh there was my head. I usually try and keep my head out of the shot because I'm a man of a certain age with a certain lack of hair. <laughs> but I'm not vain, so it's, it's fine. Oh, can we, do you want to be here? Is this good? Sorry for making you feel, oh, look at that. Oh, I'm like, come on, focus, focus. Don't do, that's probably that. Yeah, this is all right. It's all a little bit too, actually we want to be, uh, I might put it back in a minute because you can't see everything I'm doing over, over here. And that focus is really not happy. Oh, it's the, it's the shiny things it's not happy with. All right, another day I'll have uh, multiple cameras and we'll be and, and a stream deck set up so I can um, switch between them. So anyway, there's a mark. You always lock your combination square. If you don't do that little knurled knob up, then this will not be square. So you lock that. That's why I struggled. Um, the main reason with the large one because it wasn't. It was difficult to actually lock it. What am I doing that? I want to do that. And this is the wrong way around. You should always do it this way around so that you're not doing, making a dangerous cut. Whatever you're cutting, this is sharp as well. So I was saying, I was asking on Twitter today uh, if people would like a workshop tour. And not many people uh, replied. There were a few likes of it. But I think now what I might do, if I can get, actually it might have to be in the future because I would want to use, I don't know, I suppose I could use the, this camera. I'd have to get a long cable. Um, right, let's put that away. And yeah, I'm going to have to keep doing that sort of kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'd like to do a workshop tour because I've got so much stuff in here I want to share. I want to I want to explain and I want to show off. That's probably what it is. I'm a show off. Bike's in my way. I say I haven't got any heating on in the garage tonight. And I'm I'm baking. When you get the, um, the saw the wrong way around, if you put the the, uh, the rip cut saw uh, side in, this happens. <laughs> it's just it's so heavy. You can't move it. Yeah, right. This is great. I'm just going to perch this on here this time in the right place and yep so I've got my arrow there I know that's the you always mark I always mark stuff I try to always mark stuff because um, I wouldn't have known which end I'd cut just then I love I love planes hand planes and especially um, my uh, shooting board it's a fairly recent addition to my tool set so I've got, I know that that square, that square, and that square, but I don't know about this edge. So I'll just, which is not square. I've got oh, candle here, a little bit of lubrication. There we go. 
I need to sharpen this, this is actually getting a bit dull. That'll do. Still the same width. I've hardly taken anything off. Actually it's not. Uh, the bottom one is a little bit... Touch more. It's so pedantic. There we go, that's good. Right, now we've got that. What did we say? How high did we want to go? Um, so this, the height of this is four centimeters. So where are we going to go? Five centimeters, won't we? Cheers. Mm. So we need, or let's go whatever that is. Let's do that. So sixty. Four, and I just actually quickly square that up. Now this is um, important to square the um, so these bits are not going to be up against the edges of these bits. Are not going to be up against anything, um, and even when I put this bit in here, like like that even if the uh, the ends of this weren't square wouldn't really matter too much I could always plane it off um, but this needs to be square because if it's not um, then you will get something that is looks horrible will not will, will actually not look square and I know it's going to be inside of a pinball machine no one's ever going to see it I will know it's there. <laughs> and one day I'm hoping to actually sell this and the videos that I'm making, I'm hoping that one day a future person that's going to own this will see this. You might be watching this very live stream because I'm probably going to add this in. Maybe not this bit, but... Um, yeah, so f I hope you enjoy it, future person, however long that might be away. Could be one of you guys. You want to buy my pinball machine? Would you buy a car from this man? <laughs> there we go. Right, so we've got, we've got a mark here to cut. Uh, did I? I just squared that, didn't I? I forgot what I did. Yeah, that's square. Um, yeah. The uh, the mark is right along the square, so it's good. I know it's good, but I didn't mark it like I said I would. Cool. Still see this? Yeah, close enough. Uh, so I always know where it is, but there, I, I still need to look around for it. Pinball machine's right behind my arm. Wandered off a little bit here. Just come away from the line. There's no point trying to curve it back in again. So if you if your saw goes off, just keep going. So I don't know if you can see there, this end has just come away from the line. But that should be a lovely easy fix with my shooting board. I love my shooting board. There we 
go. Right, so they both do need to be exactly the same. Um, not so important that way as it is this way. They are, they're exactly the same. Um, but one of them is actually longer. This one's quite a bit longer. Oh, loads. Let's put a mark on that actually. Just um, put a black pencil line along there. Just uh, advancing the blade out a little bit. So I'll take a heavier cut. There we go. That should be exactly the same now. And it is. Okay. Which one's the base? This is the bottom. So we want, and if I needed this to be really strong, yeah, something like that. If I need this to be really strong, I, I'd probably use um, a router to take a rebate, or a rabbit, as you Americans say, uh, out of the edge, just to strengthen the joint. It doesn't need to be strong. It's, um, and wood glue is so strong, even on a butt joint like this. Um, it's so strong. Right, something I do need to do is just break these edges because they've got hairy uh, bits of ply hanging out. I don't want them getting in the way of... Um, I don't want them getting in the way of any of the gluing. This is, this is the top one, so this one needs to be good. This is one of my favorite things as well. Um, I watch a, a YouTuber called Steve Ramsey from all my woodworking. Um, he, he's not like a, a fine woodworker. If you want a fine woodworker, you want to watch um, Rob Cosman or the amazing um, British woodworker, English woodworker, uh, whose name escapes me. But he's very, very, very famous. If you if you searched for any kind of woodworking stuff, his name would come up first, and it just escapes me. Um, but yeah, Steve Ramsey is, does woodworking for mere mortals, and uh, he put me onto this um, just gluing a piece of sandpaper using um, sticky sticky spray. Oh. <sighs> sticky spray. Um, on a piece of just this is just a piece of scrap wood i haven't shaped this especially to go in my hand this is off of a um what is this is off of? this is off of an old uh di dining uh breakfast bar in our house that i stripped down and made my desk out of nothing goes to waste. no wood goes to waste around here it has to be uh actually i've just thrown some out the, the wood that i throw away either has to be destroyed or about that big and then I'm mostly prepared to throw it away but I'm I always make I'm making things little bits and pieces like all the um, uh, tool holders on my walls are all made of little bits of wood that I just salvage them put together in useful ways love that kind of thing what did I do the other day I made a new one Right, nearly done. It's good. It's quite old that piece of sandpaper on there, but it still just works. So, right, I need to get rid of my shooting board because I don't need that anymore. And do you know what? One thing I'm a very untidy person, but one thing that I've started to do more and more is to tidy up as I go. And I'm. It's, it's something that um, I'm taking to heart now and I actually take great pleasure in resetting, putting everything back how, how I want it to be, having a nice clean workbench to get going again and it's frustrating to work, where's my bin? It's frustrating to work in, uh, in a mess because you don't know where anything is and it's just 
it's not a good way to work. Right, here we go. So what do we need? We need some glue. First of all, my favourite. Yeah, not sponsored. And we need oh, a nail gun. Also one of my favourite tools. I've got so many favourite tools. Uh, I wanted to tell me about my batteries. Um, so my father-in-law gave me this drill. Uh, Ryobi um, combination drill a while ago and it had crappy old NICAD batteries that weren't working and he, he couldn't keep them to get a charge and um, you can't use the charger with newer lithium ion batteries so I bought a new charger which is up on my wall over here and I bought some very cheap the smallest ones I could find lithium ion batteries and um, off the strength of that I've I've bought a router, a skill saw, two nail guns, a jigsaw, um, and I've got something else as well. I don't keep out. There's another Ryobi somewhere. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, maybe that is it. Um, and they all work off of these the smallest batteries. They they encourage you to buy these massive, great ones. But if you put oh, this is heavy, if you put an even heavier thing in there, it becomes really unwieldy. And these charge so fast because they're so small, you don't need uh, anything huge. Right, how are we going to do this? I think we just go for it, basically. Uh, yeah, so what I'll do, put this in here. Actually, I'll put that in there. Can you see this all right? I'm, gonna, I'm using this, this piece of wood here as a height gauge for this um, piece of wood. And I'm making the, the piece in the vise just oh, just a touch higher than the, um, the that piece of wood. Okay, and then I'll move that piece of wood away. And then when I put that on there, that is fairly close to square. Yeah, it's close enough that once that's, uh, that's fixed, it'll be all right. So which side do we want up? Ah, oh, let's think. That would have been silly. I need to fix this in. Okay. Yeah, this needs to be fixed in first. So that's just a, a simple screw. Right, so, oh, I need to grab some screws. One thing I need to do in my workshop, which I haven't done yet, let's move that over there, is sort out my screws. So I have, this is all my machine bolts, not all, but all the ones that I'm, I tend to use. So for um, fixing things with nuts and bolts, and this is my wood screws, mostly wood screws. There's also some 3D printing stuff in here. I don't know, that needs a new home. But um, this is where I go. Oh, that's too big. How are we gonna do this? I need something tiny. I don't like using those ones. Oh, well, these will do. So I need four. No, I need four the same. <laughs> OCD. Right, you can go back. Go back, there we go. They should do. Yeah, close enough. It doesn't matter if they go through the bottom a little bit, I can just file them off. Um, right. That, these are just to do these. Do you know what? I'm gonna change this slightly. I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna fix the, the sides to this. These will be glued and nailed in place because we're thinking modular we've got to keep this thing modular it so that it can be changed so they'll be glued and nailed so that we need, we need screw holes in here but this bit we're going to fix with some screws and it will uh, it will be screwed in 
it won't be nailed. Yeah, how do we, how do we think about that? We're feeling good. Let's have a look at the chat. <sighs> Is the um, camera still pulsing? Um, I have no idea if it's got fixed focus. I, I'm, I've literally just plugged it into this laptop. Um, not showing off. It's showing off, really, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> You've been cutting wood. Um, wrong all your life. <laughs> I felt the same when I got it. Space is... Uh, I'm so lucky to have the space. I, I At the start of this year, Satire, um, my um, my thing... Before, actually, before it was probably towards the end of last year when I was just really heavily getting into woodwork again. I, um, I started looking at how, building a workshop in the in the garden a big workshop um, and I got quite far into the planning stages for that <laughs> before I realized that I was going to spend all of my money on a workshop and I wouldn't be able to afford anything to go in it <laughs> so um ah uh, nice tweet thanks laptop I need a name <laughs> um so anyway, yeah, I, 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 I bought tools instead and just made do with it, the space I've got. And I've got plenty of space. And you don't need a huge amount of space to get quite a lot accomplished. You just have to have realistic expectations. And more advanced tools generally just mean you can work faster, not better. Um, because you can do everything you can do with um, power tools. You can do with hand tools. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know... I am actually, um, I've been discussing this with my uh, little cabal of friends. Um, uh, the next project, it may be possibly the next project, almost certainly the next project is going to be, and this is just for you guys, don't tell anyone, um, is going to be me making a cheap arcade cabinet, probably, probably a bar top. In fact, yeah, definitely a bar top. Uh, as cheap as you can make it. So out of scrap wood using throwaway parts i'll try not to buy anything uh, and i'm going to use the bare minimum of power tools so i'll the it will be jigsaw router drill i'm not going to use table saws or anything like that or miter saws none of that stuff um so i, I want to prove because i know and i know how i felt when i watched other people's builds and and you generally see um, some guy in a massive, great workshop who's got thousand, um, multiple thousand pounds dollars um, equipment, table saw, which just I would kill for. Uh, and you're thinking, oh yeah, but you you know you're doing it because you've got that. It's not true. It's just makes it it, it just makes it quicker it, and possibly easier, but. You can do everything that I'm doing with absolutely the bare minimum of tools. Right, so um, I've got a Bosch drill. Actually, no, it's not. It's a Makita. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Makita. That's a good drill, actually. Oh, that's got that's got a story behind it. But I realise that I'm actually not getting on with things. Um, and you've got so you've you like you've invested in the Bosch. Ecosystem satire. It's this great thing. Um, you can uh, you can now <laughs> just uh, drawl over the Bosch catalog <laughs> like I do over the uh, Ryobi one. Ryobi aren't a premium brand. They're actually a budget brand. Uh, they're sort of like premium budget brand. Um, that's good now. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, la 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 la. You're ashamed DIY edition. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I like that title. Um, yeah, the challenge is going to be um, to spend as little as mo as possible, and partly I'm doing it for the clicks because it's going to be mega clickbaity. <laughs> I I am just basically going for as I'm I'm just eyeballing this. By the way, I'm not going to measure this. Yes, I am. God, I'm getting worse. 
So let's push down on that. Oh, I did cut it two centimeters either side, didn't I? I've eyeballed that. Look, I'm pushed down on there. Oh no, miles out. Doesn't matter. Let's just check that. Oh, I moved it. It's fine. Let's give it a little bit more. I actually, that, that's wrong. So that's that's where it's supposed to be. So what were we doing? We we're gonna fix this um, to the board where it is now, roughly where it is now, but square. Actually, it's, put my pen away. Mechanical pencils. This is another really good thing. Um, used to use. Well, so if I'm using, if I'm doing really big rough woodwork, in fact that was not sharpened. I'll use something like that just because a mechanical pencil will snap against uh, rough, unplaned wood. But I got so fed up of um, normal pencils that you sharpen um, snapping and wearing out, and and you would you would get an inconsistent line even from if you're doing a long line, the pencil will wear. But a mechanical pencil is the same. I didn't square that. Is the same. It's nearly square, that's fine. Um, the mechanical pencil is the same all the way along. And they do snap off, but you get used to how much pressure you can put on them. Right, so let's... Oh, here comes another favorite tool. Although this isn't a very good one. This, I do love this tool. Oh, I'll show you what I started with. Oh, is it this one? This used to be my um, Brad. Oh, I haven't got the right screen. This used to be my Brad. This isn't like, you know, to poke holes in things. It's just an old screwdriver with, that I filed the end on. But this, this is a, uh, um, an automatic centre punch. It's great. So you just push down on it and <laughs> it didn't work. It's, it's actually a poor one. Oh, it's not working. Come on. Work for me. Oh, I've made the hole anyway. <laughs> this, yeah, worked. That's what it does. Um, that's great. I love that tool. Right, pilot hole. Drill. Let's get some drill bits. Ah, oh, my stepfather, Ian Cullimore. Lovely guy. Um, he. Uh, Uh, he was an engineer and um, he's, he's given me some really nice tools. So like this square, I use this one all the time. Um, this is an engineer square, that's great. But this set of drills, I've actually <laughs> misplaced a few of them. Whoops. There were some missing to start with. Um, but I use this um, Rob on Twitter, Rob Ferrer. Um, I don't know if he's going to be watching this, but he may be, he'll watch this later. We had a discussion about pilot holes. Why you should always pilot? It's not quite so important on um, on plywood. In fact, it's not important at all on plywood, especially what we're doing here. But I'm going to do it anyway. Um, what am I doing? So this is how this is my methodology. I take my vernier calipers and zero them. This is something else that my stepfather gave me. It's a, a, a Mitutoyo vernier caliper. These are really nice I used to have um, a cheap pair from uh, that I bought of uh, Amazon and you would you would zero them and then you would move it out move it back in again and it wouldn't be zero <laughs> they were that bad uh, so that the, I'm not I'm not measuring the actual um, outside of the thread I'm, I'm measuring the shaft of the screw roughly and it's 2.39 so I can actually look in my thing here and I get 2.2 I love that I love being able to do that I've never been able to do that until recently 2.2 millimeter screw scrap wood we need some scrap and what we're we using today for scrap using a big lump of four by two. 
Am I in the right place? Ooh. I'm not going to go all the way through. The screw is probably going to go all the way through. Can't remember which way around I had it now. Is that way around? Screwdrivers all on the wall. Yeah, that one. Never used to have that. I used to all my screwdrivers used to be in well, they'd be in various places all over the place. Didn't go through. Yay! Um, or in toolboxes, in various toolboxes. But I'd never know which. I would use a screw driver, and oh, that's. Might have to put a washer in there. Oh no, I'm being too anal. Just stop it. Um, and yeah, and I'd never know where they are. I've now got all of my screw drivers. I wonder if I can. No, I'm not going to move the main main camera around because it's going to mess it around. Oh, all my screw. Yeah, there they are. All my screwdrivers live in this holder I've made for the main tools that I use in day-to-day -day building. Um, and it changes the way that you work. Right. So do I fix this to this first and then... Yes, we do. We do that. Let's put that to one side. So what I need to do now, which is going to be the top, quite like that colour. This is lighter and this is darker, but that's got a nicer grain. So let's let's make that, and this is definitely going to go on the inside. In fact, oh. thank you for everybody for all the lovely um, retweeting and. And stuff of you do of all the videos that I do, um, you really you've no idea how much that means to me. It, um, it's taken off far, far quicker than I could ever have hoped, um, and it's all down to you guys sharing what's going on. Ooh. Ah, snap! That's the right side, wasn't it? Yeah. That's going to have to go on the inside because it's got a horrible line on it. Right, so I need to keep that screw there and that screw there. Right, so normally, oh sorry, I would um, I drill this sort of hole. I need um, I need some holes through here for thin screws, which we'll get out in a sec. No, we're getting them out now because we need to know what size the holes are going to be. Um, let's take four screws and this by the way I'm not doing anything fancy here for you guys I'm this is exactly how I work all the time um, I just thought it'd be nice to share it with you so yeah I normally drill these on the drill press over here so I'd get an exact straight um, hole and that would be preferable but it's quarter to ten and my wife will murder me if I do that. So right, anyway, so that, this wood is nine mil thick, so we want to set this for four and a half mils. Four and a half is about, oh, touch my note too far. So it's one, two, three, four, plus the thickness of the pencil, so I've got a little bit, sort of like four and a quarter. And, I, so I, I want, <laughs> this is OCD, I know. Um, I want or the, the holes to be the same length away from each end. So we'll get another one of these and we're gonna set the um, two centimeters. Are we in the right place? Yeah. So I'll make a little mark there. Little mark there. And there. And one there. And 
the X marks the spot. Oh, it didn't mark that spot. It's the wrong way up, that's why. It's got um, the little indent in it. If you catch the, especially these mechanical pencils, if you catch it in that indent from the other side, it just snaps it off. So what do we need now? We need a center punch. Um, I'm gonna, uh, so in lieu of me having um, no access to my lovely drill press, I'm going to, um, sorry I shouldn't bend my head towards the camera because you'll get blinded by the glare. Um, I'm going to use the thing that I use when I can't, so if, if I'm cutting a piece of, if I'm drilling a piece that is already assembled, um, what a good example, um, and I need a straight hole in it, um, and I can't get it on the drill press, I use a little cheat. Yep, they're all good. This, um, where is it? These wear out, but I, this is drilled on the drill press, this hole here. And you've probably seen me use this if you watch the stream, uh, the, um, the videos. Um, oh, I'm over here. Uh, this has got a hole in it, and it's got an X on this side, and this means that this is the base, and this is the top. And I think it's a 4.3 mil hole? Nope. See, they, they get bigger over time, so I tend to go up through the the drill bits. That's too big. Ah, actually we've got a problem here. Because I don't want these to be 4.3, but these actually have to be tiny. Ah, that's a shame, I can't use that. Oh, I'm not going to get If I turn that drill press on tonight, be hell to pay. Alright, then we're just going to have to, we're going to have to eyeball it. It will be fine. So what we'll do, I'm going to use this one, uh, the same one as I used for the, the pilot holes earlier, and just wing it. This piece of 4x2 has been knocking about my garage for the whole of this year. It deserves all it gets now. Right, so these are the screws that are going to go in there. And where's my calipers there? Should put things away. Two point, two point eight, and I want these to be slightly bigger than the screw itself. Oh. Actually, can I just test something while we're here? Yeah, that. The, the what the the bit in this drill that I've just used to make these holes is the perfect size I'm pretty sure for a pilot hole yeah it is it's spot on right that was probably because the um, the screws are they're not the same but um, they are similar well that's it. The only thing I don't like about this one's really handy this drill because it's it's got a smaller footprint. So uh, see if I hold right the chucks together, the back of the Ryobi drill hangs out a lot more. This one's really good for it, but it's just a bit heavy and unwieldy. It's gonna be time for a drink in a minute. Lovely, it's good. Love it. Quick drink. Mm. There's hardly any alcohol in that. Oh. Quite a lot of alcohol. Quite a lot. Let's have a look at the chat. How are you guys doing? I shouldn't whisper. It's really cheering. Really, really. Jonathan. Hey, mate. Oh my God. How are you? I can't see your face, but it's good to know that you're there. Jonathan is um, one of my very, very, very good friends in real life. Um, and he is an amazing person. And oh, I can't believe he's here. That's really cool. 
Right, so I need to go back through the, the chat, the lovely chat. I love seeing all this chat. This is great interaction. How many people have we got in here? I can't see. How many people are watching? Six in now. Lovely. Camera's good. La, 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 la. Gee, shame. We got to that bit. Um, pure luck, the Bosch. I had an old battery drill, moved house, treat myself. Only had to charge it once in over a year. I, do you say that? This is my um, third drill. Um, this old Black & Decker Firestorm. This came as a set that um, you can actually, you can take that part out and then you can put um, a jigsaw in there or a sander. I've lost those bits now and only ever use it in a drill. But that thing just holds its charge. That's only a um, NICAD battery that I've had for literally oh, more than a decade um, and it just keeps going and that's really good for a, I use that as a, a driver mostly now it doesn't because it's not got a very fast spinning chuck um, uh, then started on the game you basic what's that so I got the challenge oh yeah decide yes right so laptop retrospective early in an earlier comment says deciding the game on the game you will base it around so the uh, he's talking about the um, the next project that I'm going to do, which is going to be the um, how cheap can you build an arcade machine? And a lot of people would assume that I would just make it um, like a normal multiple game emulation machine. But I am keen on making a dedicated Pac-Man machine. And... I still might do that in another build, but if I don't do, if the uh, the cheap build is not a Pac-Man machine, which I'm still tempted to do that, it will be um, either a single game or a single single genre of games. Um, so like shoot 'em ups or not beat 'em ups. It's not going to be a beat 'em up game. It's going to be a single player machine. Um, so beat 'em ups. You really want six buttons per player and two players. Anyway, raw power. <laughs> um, phone's going nuts. Oh, there's many things going on on there. I, I, I'm sure Lewis is probably looking after my social media needs. He's great. Lewis has helped me out so much. Uh, not surprised you've got some great content and even better delivery. Oh, mate, stop it. <laughs> I just you know, skill shit, blah blah. blah. <laughs> I don't, I don't do well with compliments. Keep them coming though. <laughs> oh, Nelly, thank you so much for putting that on your Facebook page. Um, uh, almost time here for me to start preparing supper. The time changed today. Oh, I know. Time clocks all over the place. Um, this mic is uh, um, Ant Lion. I had the box. What did I do with the box? I threw the box away in disgust when I couldn't find the actual microphone. One second. And I nearly sold this. I, I bought this microphone uh, when I was, uh, when we were doing lots of Ready Player Two stuff. Here it is. Lots of Ready Player Two stuff. Uh, and um, I wanted a microphone that I could use for streaming in um, VR. So, oh, let me just make sure I'm showing you the right thing. It's Antlion Audio, uh, Mod Mic Wireless. Uh, I bought it, it was, um, it was over £100 when I bought it. And at the start of lockdown, when I was buying all my tools and getting rid of stuff that I didn't need, I decided I didn't need this because I wasn't doing any streaming. Um, and I, did, I didn't see a need for it. So I... Um, I decided to sell it and I put it on Facebook. It's probably still on there. Um, and I put it up f for about £40 and nobody took it. And I put it down to £30. Nobody took it. And I ended up down at about £20, I think it was, and nobody bought it. Could have had this for 20 quid, And it is. It's as good as a, uh, a Blue Snowball. Right. Countersink. I'm not going to countersink these heavy because they don't need to be flush. But I just like to see the um, the heads not sticking up too much. 
This is fun. I'm going to do this more. This is great. And next time I'll make a bit more effort to prepare. Right. That is our top. That's got to be fixed to these. That one's the outside. Oh, that's got a, a horrible mark on it. Can I get that off a of razor? Yeah. Oh, I didn't finish reading the chat. I do love reading the chat. I love interacting with you guys. Good day, Jonathan. Pac-Man Pac -Man would be epic, yeah. Cool. Good feedback, thank you. Um, so Jonathan, what we're doing is, um, oh, let me just make sure, you, I'm, I'm gonna be pointing at things and you might not be able to see. There we go. Back of the pinball machine, in here, I need to mount two of these. Oh, stacked up. That one's already fixed to a board. Um, let's do it over here. Stacked up like this in their own little house, uh, in a, on a board that I can unscrew from the uh, inside of the machine. So we're just making these a little house, basically. Um, yeah, that's you all caught up. I was going to talk to you actually about um, about glass. I wondered if your father might know someone or. Um, the best, well, maybe advise me on uh, toughened glass because I need a sheet of um, six mil toughened glass for the top of the arcade machine, but not yet. It's going to be a little while. Right, I'm going to do that trick again. Somewhere around, touch more further down. Yeah. And that's good. So these are only going to be screwed in. So if I just square them up as best I can by touch, and you'll be amazed how well you can flush something up just by feeling. But taking your time is really important. So um, my um, amazing hole punch won't go through that hole. I'm hoping my old one will. It won't. So I'm just going to go for it with the drill. This was the pilot hole drill, which is probably just as good. In fact, what we'll do, <sighs> let's screw that in. Don't bother with um, drill drivers for this sort of thing. You need a little bit of uh, finesse and control that uh, you can only get by doing it by hand. Beautiful, love that. You'd use a drill driver on this, it'll probably just rip it straight through. One time in 10. Okay. So a good test here. <laughs> Nervous moment for me here is, uh, I mean, it, this can be, um, this, can, this little test can be spoilt by um, uh, impurities uh, getting caught in the edge. But how square are we? Because if these edges are square and this is screwed to this, then that should be square. Oh, it's really close. You see that? Oh, where's the camera? There it is. So there is a small gap at this end. I can just rock it a little bit, but I like to say that's gonna be impurities on the, uh, well, especially where I was drilling through, there's gonna be stuff floating around in there but it's solid as well it's not you know I wouldn't sit on it <laughs> it's been, well I definitely wouldn't sit on it um, yeah chunky monkey right so uh, how are we going to do this one 
Oh, let's do it this way. Right, this time I'm going to put that just about flush in the vise. You'd be amazed how many times I um, put my finger in the vise like this and close it. Just... <laughs> it's like I hate myself. <laughs> So, it's going to be a bit harder to flush. In fact, nope, I'm not going to do that. Um, I need to, oh, that'll do. What am I doing? Oh yeah, let's do it. Look at that. That's so close. That's exactly what I need. I just need something there just to, just to hold I take a little bit of weight off of this. No, that's, it's going to be better if I do it like this. Sometimes this sort of job is... Ah, right, so I've got a small problem here and the board is actually warped. This board here is actually bowed. But it's not bowed that way, it's actually bowed just a little bit that way. And when I hold this against this, it's not a lot, but that rocks just enough for this to pivot right in the middle. And that's going to make that really tricky to hold in place. In fact, what I'm going to do, we'll put that there, we'll push that against that. I could clamp that. But I'm not gonna. This will this will be fine. Get one in. Once the drill's on its way, it'll be fine. I can only see one screw. <laughs> There's another screw here somewhere. Anybody seen it? Where did it go? There it is. Don't panic. Yeah, that um, is that because that of that bow. There's a small gap there, but it'll be um, that'll be gone once this is screwed in place. Keeping my knuckle well away from that drill, but even a small drill bullet like this will do some damage. It'll make you think about it next time you go to drill or something. He says from experience. Oh, this is so nice having you guys with me because I'm normally, if I was working this late at night on something, I'd be in here by myself, maybe a bit of music on or something, or a video in the background or a podcast. Sometimes I'll listen to. Actually, I've been listening, Lewis. I've been listening to Big Red Barrel guys again. That's, they've been, they've been quite interesting. Been um, enjoying their content. That one's. Really square. Very square. Loving that. So that's going to go on there. And this time, and uh, look. That. Ooh. Oh, angles. There's hardly. Look how much play there is there. Oh, in fact, there's. Yeah, there's a millimeter of play there. Now it's not. It's not quite, oh, I think that's actually being held. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of twist in, in this top board, probably in the bottom one as well. And I know I know that for a fact. Oh, one of the screws came through the bottom. We need to fix that. That's gonna cause a problem. I know that these um, this plywood is a bit warped for a fact because I just made some boxes for, to go um, and under a bed out of this plywood and it sorry about the noise it was not good it was it's warped to buggery not good stuff um it's and it's a thing it's a problem with this thickness of ply more than anything but that's fine right so this is good this is i'm happy with this um, so I'm just going to mark a line here 
here, just a little mark, just to show me where to put my nails, because we're going to nail this in place with glue. With, with glue. Good. Shouldn't need to do the other side. I should just be able to. How are we all doing? Are you all still there? Am I by myself now? And you've all left. I should. I need to take that off. That needs to go. Because I'm going to glue there. God, I hate these stickers. This isn't an, an amazing peeling moment. Look, that's, that's how they come off. They just, why would they do this? They ruin the wood. And if you try and put a finish on that afterwards, there's always some glue residue left behind. That sticky and nasty, horrible stuff. Definitely a better way they could do that. Right, just lining that up with the mark that I made. Let's move that out of the way. Can you see that? Little marks there. Ooh, I went around my finger then. I had my finger like this and drew a little, there's a little bulge there. It's fine. So yep, that's good. And that's good. So we're gonna check. We've got the right brad nails in. I think those are the smallest ones I've got. Yeah. Okay. Let's put that one away for a sec. And glue. Wait. Fixing holes. Yeah, this will do. Actually, I'm not sure. Oh, it doesn't matter. I can do that. No, because they're going to be there. Thinking with my brain. So I've got this much room here let's like this I'm definitely eyeballing this one kind of eyeballing it I'm not eyeballing it I'm measuring it so it's two centimeters so I want a centimeter in in fact just under a centimeter in because I don't want to be screwing up against the side <laughs> I'm measuring all of it Wow I'm just going to eyeball it. It'll be fine. Measures everything. This is the stuff that I usually cut out of the video because I'm aware how pedantic I'm being and anal. And I know that people don't want to watch it. <laughs> so I'm measuring every last little screw hole that they make on things that just... It doesn't matter. I could put one screw in one side and none on the other side. It will do exactly the same thing as I'm going to do. <laughs> doesn't matter but I would know I need to sleep at night guys come on oh, I need to get a new one of these if I think this this might have had it and I what I do is I it's got a big it's got two bits that come out come off these it's got the end bit with the spring in it and I do that up and it's got this bit it's got another bit of spring in it and this this weird thing I don't know what it is like a percussive thing. I don't know how it works. I just tend to do it up. And it works. And it stops working. Doesn't matter. Still putting a, a little dent in there. And it works again. And then... <laughs> ah! Oh, it worked. Good. Um... Right, so these are going to be, what are we going to use for these? A 
I spend a lot of time in this um, this uh, screw box. B and Q for uh, UK guys um, are the best ways to buy screws because you can buy pick and mix screws now, which um, pick and mix is amazing. Oh, there's my three mil. <sighs> And you, you just fill the bag up with with all sorts screws, machine screws, washers, bolts, nuts, all different sizes, and you can just go wild. You can go nuts, um, and it's not very expensive. A reasonable size bag. I haven't got a bag. I think I just threw it away. Of the last lot I got, I got a lot the other day. I think it's four pounds for, a, let's let's say a bag that would be about that long uh, and about I don't know that thick. Um, and I just fill it up with loads of different types of screws. And I come home and I chuck them all out on here on on my workbench and I sort them all out. And that's just how sad I am. <laughs> it's great. Right, chat time. Uh, oh, thank you, Jonathan. Scraping of the screw. <laughs> Sorry, cats. Nelly's cats. Five times I'm yelling at the PC. Scrape the sticker off already. Yeah, I know. Oh, I thought it was going to go underneath and it wouldn't matter, but it mattered. It would have mattered underneath. I would have ended up taking it off. I always end up taking it off. I don't know why I don't do it sooner. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I shouldn't cut it out, but I do. I, there, a lot goes on the uh, on the cutting room floor. <laughs> it's, it's not important stuff. Your grandfather is like that, whereas I'm with your processes of thought and execution. <laughs> Jonathan and I, and I play um, snooker together. Or did before the world went crazy, um, and we spend quite a lot of time think, talking about processes and things. It's, um, it's always interesting working through that sort of thing. Yeah, a little bit of counter sinking. This uh, I've got different counter sinks. This is my biggest one. There's another one that's a bit smaller than this one um, you can see there not brilliantly in focus but these ones are like got really sharp edges and when you countersink with this it tends to leave like a not a round hole it's it's kind of like a hexagon or i don't know how many sides it leaves but it's not a circle this one is my oldest countersink it's ancient it's blunt but it does exactly what I want it to do. It almost wears the whole... Oh, I've done there. All right. So that's ready to go in the PC like that. This is ready to go on here like this. That's all marked. I just need to glue and nail it. I'm not too worried about stray nails going into this because it's... There's, there's no way a, a nail would damage that. Um, right. Oh, a oh, gurning face. I haven't done that for a while. I've not put my face actually so much in. I, I think it's because in, in the video, I should finish my sentences. This is something that I do. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I um, narrate with a script all the videos. As I've struggle to finish sentences sometimes I'll just wander off or points even sometimes but yeah I don't put my uh, here we go <laughs> I'll go back to the point I haven't been putting my face in the video so much you'll see me occasionally give the camera a little wave and that's for the thumbnails generally um, but that's mostly because um, the outside work or the bigger the work that I've been doing so far with um, on the pinball cabinet I'm I can I don't need to be in front of the camera so much but the uh, 
once you get inside the machine and I'm doing the wiring and and stuff like that you're gonna be seeing a lot more of me I'm sorry about that I can't help the way I look I'll have a word with my mother it's her fault right that's way too much glue always put too much glue on always put and at the end of my bench here is practically solid glue because I'll I'll wipe I'll wipe off the excess and then just it's like the like the bogey wipe under the under the seat of your car <laughs> you know what I'm talking about you've all done it I haven't right okay get it reasonably in position slide it into the right place so it's rocking a little bit but that's soon going to be remedied oh where can I do this so you can see it you, I doubt that the um, actual true sound of this it never comes across when you hear this on the videos um, the nail gum um, it sounds just like a zzz, but in real life it's just bang <laughs> it's quite a it's, it's not a gentle thing All right, I need to Excuse my, my ball patch. That's good. Right in the middle and a good depth as well. It hasn't gone too far in. Let's get this other side in. Line it up. Cool. What's happened there? Oh, look. This is where the label was. And that's picked up all the crap off of the workbench. I could get some methylated spirits and just wipe that off. But I'd rather moan it about it. It, um, it will soothe my soul. Right, that feels good. Let's get it in the right place. Nice squeeze out of glue coming out the sides there. One more here. Perfect. Okay, they haven't got any. Sometimes um, uh, brad nail, especially because these are. Well, so the the length of brad nail that you're supposed to use. Oh, I've got one here. Actually, I'm sitting on top of my little storage box. These are the um, the length that I'm using right now. And the length that you're supposed to use is around twice the length of the or the thickness. Oh God, this is like 4D chess. Twice the thickness of the um, the wood that you're going through. This is about right, actually. It's a tiny little bit longer than double the. Well, that's gone. Oh, there it is. Tiny little bit longer than double the. Um, oh, that's gone again. But that's fine. What do we think? That's a, that looks that's a nice little house. That's solid. Um, and that once that glue dries, those bits will not move from there. They they are. I did. Um, so this was the board, the old PC board, um, and it has still got this bit of wood on the bottom here. But all of the other bits, so it had like the bracket, it's all gone in the bin now, um, for the, uh, the expansion cards and the, the expansion cards went through those holes there. Um, and the the bracket, I, I used wood glue and I sanded that bit down and then clamped it down with wood glue on this bit. And the wood glue was so good that instead of when I pulled it off, because I needed to break it down to make it smaller and go in the bin and everything, when I pulled it off, that actually just stripped the, the wood away rather than breaking the glue. So, so strong. The other glue that I use is cyanacrylate super glue type stuff, which is also a wood glue, um, is not quite as strong, but it's still good. But yeah, those, that, I mean, that's just your basic butt joint. In, in woodwork, that is as basic as it gets. That's just butting a, an edge up to a face. And um, and it, uh, it will be fine. 
So the good thing is now, I'm not gonna do it now, I, I can actually unscrew these and get to this one, unscrew this. So that, that's gonna work. This can be screwed into the base of the um, arcade cabinet. And this can be screwed on top of here. Yeah. I want it to be, I want it to be about the same. Yeah, I want it to be the same. So we'll measure, we'll do it so you can see. Otherwise, why are you here? That's, that's how far in that is. And we'll put a little line across the back here. Cool. Something like that. Well, I'm definitely, I am eyeballing this one. I'm not eyeballing the back, so I want it to be straight. But I can see the distance between the, um, the ends is really close. Maybe touch that way. And twist it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Mark the holes. And they've got nice long slots, so even if I get it a little bit wrong, I can always adjust it, it's fine. I've got my two screws. And my center punch. Which is working again. Which is not working anymore. Damn it. I'm, def I'm deliberately not going all the way through. Now. Oh, I don't need to. I was going to countersink those, but they don't need to be countersinked. Sunk. Countersinked. We're nearly there. Uh, screwdriver. Screws. I think I said I prefer washers. This, yeah, I want to put washers on these, which is in the other tub. Oh, bad back. Shouldn't have done that. So, probably, oh yeah, those. These are just stop the uh, the screw being pulled to one side. I'll put some in the bottom one as well. Oh, it'll also stop the screw going all the way through. Not gurning. Try and smile. <laughs> gurning in my face when I when I watch myself back on videos. And <laughs> it's painful. The sacrifice that I make for your entertainment. <laughs> Never has someone suffered so much with his own face for the entertainment of others. Right. Wash is not actually quite big enough for that slot, but it's big enough to stop the screw going all the way through. Are we on the line? Where's the line? No. There we go, it's on the line that side. There we go. We have a house for our amps. An amp house. And house. Why not? Stop these uh, corners splintering. Actually give them a proper bevel. I probably, um, if I'd have thought about it before I put that on, I would have used my block plane. This, this was the cheapest, nastiest block plane I could get off of Amazon. Um, 
And the cool thing is with planes, <laughs> here I go again. Oh, so I've got my um, I've got my Stanley number four and a half, and that's I think that was made in the 1940s. And my Stanley number four, and that one was made in the 1930s. They are that's getting on for a hundred years old. Well, 90 odd years old. And this is a brand new made probably in the last couple of years. Silverline cheap and nasty plane. R just ridiculously cheap. But actually it, it could do with um, a new blade because uh, the blade it came with was quite rubbish. But you can fix up a this is one of the one of the things I'd like to pass on. You don't need. I mean, I didn't pay. You don't have to pay a lot for hand planes. Um, I didn't pay a lot for those. I think the four and a half I got for about twenty pounds, and the four I got off of eBay for probably fifteen pounds. They're cheap as anything. But the um, the brand new one I got for I think it's Amazon Warehouse, and I think I got it for um, about twelve quid delivered. But it doesn't compare to the, uh, the the real thing until you um, spend some time setting it up, and then it does. It's fine. But you can buy newer old tools. It's, it's what you do with them. It's, there's a lot of um, tool snobbery around that's uh, completely unnecessary. Brand snobbery as well. You Bosch. You Bosch fans. What have I got? I've got something Bosch. I think it's actually, it might be my, my washing machine. <laughs> Which is pretty good, I have to say. I'm quite a big fan of Bosch. As a brand. It's that gum. Oh yeah, so I, I wouldn't use methylated spirits, but the smell is so bad, it will give me a migraine. Front and rear, they're marked. So yeah, anyway, anyway, that's gonna, I'm just gonna pop that in there. Excuse me. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Can I show you this? Oh, because I'm nearly finished. I might as well. I've got to be a bit careful because this table is not very strong. Let's see if I can take the camera. Oh, here we go. I haven't got image stabilization on this, so I've got to be a little bit careful. So that's going to go in there. I need room around the back here to get to the 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 wire um, ports and room to put my hand in to um, adjust the bass, treble and volume and the power switches. So it will go in the middle there somewhere. I do need some room around here. So I'm probably going to have to build some like a bridge um, up here somewhere for the power strip. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the and I need to keep this away from the back of this um, because the the power leads will go be going oh look I can show you that uh, the power leads will be going in there um, and I need to box that section off to keep it you know um, so there's no risk of electrocution um, but I also need to keep it away from this back side over here uh, where all the um, video cables go in and out, so it'll probably be over this side a little bit more because I can I can slip my hands down here to get to all the the knobs, but I do need those to be free. Cool. Yeah. Oh, let's have a final look at the chat, and then oh, I think I'll call it a night. Oh, loads of chat. Make a snooker table. <laughs> um, <laughs> drink, yeah, drink. Thank you. 
What's the? Well, hang on. So we're going to have a more fun making it drinking game, drinking bingo. What are the? Uh, what are the triggers? Satire. I want to know. Um. I don't want. <laughs> Wandering's good. Not the car grim. I probably need uh, context for that. A nail through plywood and not. Oh god. <laughs> gurning. Oh, my gurning curse. Nail through plywood, not splitting. Nice. Yes. Well, plywood's pretty good actually. Um, I, I know I went into the end. Um, but it, it's. They are. They are. Uh, these are 18 gauge these uh, brad nails and that's um, that's not displacing a lot of wood there's because it's not very dense plywood it's light there's actually a lot of air in there there's a lot of a lot of space um, what are your motivations behind building regardless of the project or the purpose I've always been curious as to the why as if anything at all. That's a really good question. Why do I make these things? Because I don't intend to um, ever keep them. Um, oh, by the way, wiping glue with the finger. Glue uh, spreaders. You can buy glue. Can you believe that? You can buy glue spreaders. Are oh, a complete and utter waste of time. Um, there's, there's two things that you would... Three things you, you need. I always keep... Um, like bamboo skewers around for gluing holes. In fact, look, that's got glue all over the end of it, dried up glue. Um, or brushes. There'll be a brush in there somewhere. I can't. I, it's, I'll get it out another time. Or, ne or never. <laughs> um, but fingers are the best glue spreaders, without question. Ask any woodworker. I always go in and uh, and say, oh. Look at my, my skin's peeling off my fingers. And my wife misses more fun making it always falls through. Yeah, so Jonathan's question. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> satire's distracting me. I will get to that. Doesn't the glue spread when you squash the wood together? Yes, it does. If you put enough on, but you can never be sure that you've put enough on. Um, you... Uh, it's it's a school of thought kind kind of thing. Um, I think most woodworkers spread the glue. Good woodworkers will spread the glue um, on onto all parts of the faces that they're actually gluing. The other thing is that um, it doesn't come out of the bottle very evenly. Um, it's got kind of like a little spreading nozzle on it, um, but even so, it doesn't come out of the the bottle very evenly. You you can only put guess the kind of pressure that you need to put on and um, you will have more glue in one place and less in another and you do not want any places not to have glue so if you spread it out with your finger you know all of the places and especially making something like this where I'm gluing on end grain to face grain you want to have no um, no dry dry bits because it will be there will just be no strength in it at all right so motivation what are your motivations behind building right uh, curious as to the why why do i build things so like i was saying i don't i've built i've built so far um one full size cabinet um i built myself a bar top cabinet and then um, sold that like a couple of years later after having it just knocking around in my garage for months, um, not not being used. Th this is the whole reason <laughs> that the channel is called More Fun Making It Than Playing It. Sorry about the glare, by the way. I have to have mega lighting up here to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, this is the whole reason why the channel is called More Fun Making It Than Playing It. Um, it's because I have more fun making things than playing them. And I love I love playing games. I'm a lifelong game player. 
um, I I will always play video games, and I've and I've got a great passion and love for retro gaming. So the, the it was you know I I've kind of stumbled into making arcade cabinets some years ago, uh, and that was the start part of the start of my woodworking career, not career, my woodworking hobby. Um, but why why make them if I don't play them? It's I. I don't honestly don't know why I I mean because I could make anything I could you know I, I do make I make lots of things um, I made my wife a little side table to go next to her reading chair in the house which sounds really posh but it's not <laughs> it's a nice table <laughs> it's a nice chair but it's not posh um, and I'd made that out of um, I made that out of an old bookshelf I've got some of the wood left here so this this is actually this is either the top or the bottom, um, but I had shelves that didn't have this profile on the side, and I chopped them down, um, and I made legs out by gluing up different bits, and and I glued a top together and a bottom shelf type thing together, and I, and I made her a nice looking table out of um, basically scrap wood. Um, earned me some really good husband points, um, but and and I made I made her a bird table at the start of the year. That was one of the first things I made actually in lockdown. Um, and I made the cat a cat bench, <laughs> um, which is much more impressive than it sounds. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I enjoy making lots of other things, but usually um. If I'm making something for, something for me, it's, it tends to be, and if it, unless it's something functional in here, it tends to be a curiosity. It, it tends to be something that I am curious about making. I'm keen to play pinball, but I know for a fact that I will play it for a month or two and then be bored. And that takes up a lot of room, so it's got to go. So the, the, the motivation for making things is purely curiosity it's best i can do really does that answer your question um yeah it's posh <laughs> it's not <laughs> we do no it's not posh <laughs> i don't know what to say to you it's not posh we uh we don't live in a horrible house but it's not posh um i know i right so my uh, Barbara says, um, uh, um, Nelly says, I think I would find it very hard to sell anything if I made it. Um, I don't. I really, really don't. Um, it. I, the first arcade machine I made was a disaster. I never finished it. It. It was. It was me throwing every single idea that I um, that I had at the project it was it was a, a a case of walking before you could run um and i didn't have the materials i didn't have the skills i didn't have the tools uh or the knowledge to use the tools that i had and i ended up with a monstrosity a full-sized arcade machine which was big <laughs> big with a massive four player control panel I never have four people around to play arcade games I have um, at the most two uh, and very you know that's a very rare occasion no idea why I made a four player machine four size out of 18 mil MDF which is heavy it says MDF stands for medium density but it's not <laughs> it's, it's dense um, that, that, arcade, that pinball machine is heavy um, so it wasn't portable this arcade machine I'm, and I made it just out of a, it was a passion project I don't I still don't know to this day why I did it but I don't regret making it but it was it wasn't a good thing to look at it never got painted um, I ended up 
just working around it in the garage, yeah, in my workshop, my office. I don't know what I should call this place. Um, I ended up working around it for months at a time, and and not and hating it. Uh, I took the um the control panel. Oh, so huge control panel, minuscule screen. Because this was uh, this good. This must have been at least ten years ago, um, and back then. LCD screens were a bit more premium and a spare like screen would have been a 50 it must have been a 15 inch screen this massive great arcade machine a tiny little screen huge bezel all around it 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 didn't look good um uh so i, t I took the 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 control panel was removable which is the only good thing i did so i took the control panel off to make it a little bit easier to walk around put the control panel to one side and i ended up taking all the parts um that were inside the computer it was just like a spare my old gaming pc um the screen got repurposed for something else or thrown away um i probably didn't have any real speakers set up in it i don't remember fixing speakers to it and there was very little else attached to it so it ended up just being this big box stood next to <laughs> on one side of the this room which i hated i hated it i really did hate it um and i ended up breaking the that part of it up keeping the control panel for a long time the control panel went up into the loft for a few years and and, and didn't think no, any more about it just i used this the some of the wood for other things shelves and stuff like that and bits of desk that i made um and didn't think any, anything more about it and then i made i decided to make myself another one i got a, the bug approached me again and i decided to make a bar top machine which i thought this makes a lot more sense i can i'll use this i'll make a bar top machine and i'll use it it'll be great so i um i made one and this is when I, um i got my 3d printer which is um I don't know, should I show you? No, you can't really see it. It's over that side. When I do the workshop tour, I'll show you the 3D printer. Um, I got my 3D printer and I decided um, I, it would be a good thing to have 3D printed parts. As and it, Actually, I've got one up here. Excuse me one moment. I have to... Oh, a lot of stuff to move out of the way, but this is... Oh no, there's one there. I've got two of them. I didn't realise I had two left. So I made... Oh, this is actually a template of it. Um, that's a 3D printed um, template of uh, a thicker version of this with um, mounting holes in the back to screw it into a, into a control panel. Uh, so joystick and six buttons. Um, and yeah, and that was... Um, has that one got no it hasn't I, I i printed it with uh patterns like stars and shapes um in between and then mounted um led lights behind it so it lit up and the uh, the marquee at the top of the um of that bar top so the bar top was black it had green t molding uh all around it and the marquee was um a 3d printed green sheet of this this PLA filament with uh, like an inset um, space invaders and the word invader across it um, and it did and I had that backlit with uh, LED so the the invaders were all lit up that looked really cool that was uh, I was quite pleased with that I, I that machine was 99% finished um, and there were still a few things that needed doing on it like back panel <clears throat> back panel um uh, sockets and things that needed sorting out but it was that was taken to barbecues and really became very popular in and amongst the family in fact my nephews loved it so much they were devastated when i sold it on um uh, for not very much money actually and, but again it was because it was sat in the garage uh getting in my way taking up valuable space that i needed to actually do things so I sold it and I don't, I didn't regret it one bit. Um, 
And then at the start of lockdown, I decided to build my nephews the uh, the Batman Spider-Man mini arcade cabinet, which was very mini. So I didn't really sell that. I did that wasn't one I got rid of. Um, it's it's just fun making things. I love making things. I'm 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 a naturally curious person, and I really like to learn things. I'm always insatiably trying to learn stuff, um, expanding my knowledge, my woodwork knowledge. This year has gone from zero to to where I am now, and and I could not be happier with what the the level of um, precision I'm able to to make things. But anyway, that's it really. I, uh, I'm going to go now. I'm sure. Oh my God. It's 10 to 11. How long have I been streaming? Does that show me? Um, it probably shows me on there somewhere. I don't know. Stream analytics. Oh no. Thank you, Nelly. Two hours. <laughs> Amazing that you've stayed around for two hours to watch me just noodling around in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna be tidying up next. That's um that's my next job after I have a drink. Mm. So the next video is is done. Uh not done, is narrated. A script is written and and I recorded the um the voice over the this afternoon I've just got to I, I was meant to um, do editing tonight but I've got plenty of time I've got until Wednesday so but yeah the next one is all about I'll give you guys you guys are my super fans um, uh, let's go back to that one uh, so it's all about um, this back panel the PC board, the new PC board, which is that fixed? Yeah, that's fixed in place. I can't show you that. Um, yeah, the new PC board and um, little bits and pieces like this hole going through there. The hole, there's a hole underneath here for the bass speaker. Um, can you see where I'm pointing? Yeah. And there's a hole in the um, in the front of the bass for the fan oh and the plunger the plunger's cool the plunger's really cool i'm really pleased with how that's turned out i haven't wired it up or used it yet uh, in anger um but that i wasn't going to put a plunger in it i'm so glad i did because it's um i think it's added that level of authenticity that just gets something over the line um, along with the physical nudging, oh, so good. Can't wait to show that. And now that I've got streaming set up, when I've got the thing built, I'll be able to actually stream playing the game in a way that I wouldn't have before. Right, anyway. Um, you are... <laughs> you are wonderful people for staying with me this long and watching... Thank you so much. I will do this again. I'll, um, I'll cherry pick and, and save certain tasks. Uh, this was an ideal one. Just to, just to noodle about making something simple. Um, and you know, it's not exactly beautiful. but um, Simple but nice. Um, and having a chat with you guys. Uh, it's because I, you know, I well, um, satire knows that I would do this if, even if it was still just uh, him and Lewis watching every week. I'd still do it because I just I I love sharing this stuff with you guys. Ah, oh, the plunger, <laughs> the plunger. <laughs> you walked your dog. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You're very welcome. Thank you, guys. I will speak to you all on Twitter. Keep up the amazing support. I, I love it. Um, 
and love you all. Thanks very much. Bye, Jonathan. Love you, man.